It all began on a fall day in Manhattan. You know those crisp, clear autumn days you find only in New York? Well, this day was cold, hazy, and windy. But a newsreel cameraman gets used to shooting in all sorts of weather. I was on an assignment to photograph some of the wonders of New York. Well, here comes one now. Good morning, baby. Yes, sir, there's nothing like the New York skyline. My assistant, to use the word loosely, was born 20 years too late. He still doesn't believe the talking will last. Take off the coat, Put on your arm. Hand on the hip. Ah, very pretty. Okay, that was good. You can relax for a minute, sweetheart. That is very good. Thanks, Bill. I'll get the next outfit ready. Okay. I think we got some pretty swell shots today, Phil. Don't you think I bring out a sparkle in those girls? No, I don't. I thought you'd know. You don't? I thought I... Hey, Roger, move the equipment over near that entrance. I'll set up for the next shot over there. You are sure of these arrangements? Yes, sir. I planned everything very carefully. Good morning, gentlemen. You wish to speak to Mr. Stanhope? Yes, is he here? Mr. Stanhope is out on business. Perhaps I could be of assistance. Well, I have always conducted my business with Mr. Stanhope. I understand, but under the circumstances, perhaps I can handle it for you. My name is Fredericks. I have had an account from this bank for the past 10 years. I'd like to close it out tomorrow. I trust there's nothing we... Uh... Oh, not at all. There's it's nothing uh... wrong. It's merely that Mr. Frederick's business requirements force him to make other arrangements. I see. Yes, I would like to be certain that the bank has enough cash on hand to facilitate the withdrawal. I don't think you need worry about that. It's a matter of $800,000. That's quite a large sum. We are quite a large bank. I assure you it won't embarrass us. That's fine. As I explained, sir, everything will be in order. Just so. 10 o'clock tomorrow, then. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. People are always getting in front of the camera. Sometimes accidentally, sometimes deliberate. But I never thought an innocent scene like this would be the most dangerous shot I ever made. I'm sorry, Phil. I didn't see him coming. That's all right, honey. I got enough footage on it. That fellow didn't spoil anything. Well, that's the last task to get that winded up. Nice, short, pleasant day. Thanks a lot, Miss Ellie. Not at all, Phil. Goodbye. Goodbye. Many thanks, girls. You are wonderful. Seeing you later, honey. Yeah, be seeing you. What's the matter? Is she going home to get her glasses? Roger, put your eyes back in your head and let's get out of here. I got a date tonight. Me too. Hiya, Bessie. Hello, baby. Anybody with a soft, insistent voice call me? No, Mrs. Barr. Have some candy? Hmm, thanks. Why don't you get yourself up to the lab? This film won't develop by itself. I'd rather stay here and see what develops. <laughs> You're not going to send me out in the cold again. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a frail fella. This is a thin coat. I'm, I'm, I'm liable. It was freezing on it. The wind was blowing, and I have to go out again. Yeah, that's right. I, I couldn't stay here. No. You mean, I go out? And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cold. And, uh, uh, no? I, uh, Mr. Avery said for you to see him as soon as you got in. Yes? Go on, dear. Mr. Avery hasn't got a soft, insistent voice. Insistent, but definitely not soft. He's tied up right now, but I'll call you when he's free. Okay. I'll be in the conference room. Hey, George, will you put that stuff away for me? Keep yourself available. Well, who woke you up? I hope you've had a tough day. Did you have a good time with all the pretty girls? I bet he was so nervous he forgot to take the lens cap off. <laughs> very funny, very funny, and slightly corny, too. Come on, deal me in. 
hope you guys feel this funny when I've taken all your dough away. You'll have to take it with a gun. Yeah, we played with you before, sucker. Stop knocking yourselves out and let's get on with the game. <coughs> now, who loaned me five bucks? Hey, you oh, ten bucks already. I knew you could do it, baby. All right, boys, pay me. It's all the way I train Slinky. I feed him nothing but the best grease and oil. Where are you from? Oh, Phil. Sign here. Hey, Roger. How'd you make out? Oh, right now I got about enough to retire on for about 20 minutes. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Frankly, no. <laughs> Say, this ain't my can. The guy from Globe took yours by mistake. can make a mistake. Let's take a look. It says Argus Newsreel. That's it. That's mine. <laughs> hey, it's a good thing or else we both would have gotten balled out. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh. Well, I see you were successful. I told you we could trust him. Nice going, Sonny. Look, uh, Mr. Gibbons, I had a... Now, just to show you how much I appreciate good service, instead of the 20 I promised you, I'm gonna make it 40. Well, gee, that's well, Mr. Gibbons, but I'll just take the 20. Well, I tried my best, but they pulled a switch on me at the last minute. You mean this isn't the right film? I was just getting out of the elevator when a Dolby Clark grabbed me and... Ow! Ow, what are you doing? Ow, cut it out! Cut it out! Please, I couldn't help it. No! No, Mr. Gibbons! Ah! No! Ah! Big heart. That's 
excellent suggestion. <coughs> Phil, dear, Phil. I'm going down for coffee. I'll be back. Uh, Mrs. Farr. Yeah, my name is Beck. I saw you photographing some girls on Madison Square today, didn't you? I was there. Uh, can we talk privately? Come into my private office. I think you took my picture today. Yeah? Well, I hope it turns out all right. Uh, no, you don't understand. I was with a young lady. Mm. Congratulations. No, but the young lady is, uh, let me put it this way, uh, my wife might not understand. Uh, oh. And if she sees me on the screen at the newsreel with that young lady, well, briefly, I'm willing to pay you for that film, Mr. Sparr. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you right now. That stuff's not developed yet. But when it is, I'll get in touch with you. Where will you be? I can meet you right here. Okay, it's a date. Uh, when, Mr. Spar, what time? Sometime after the film gets back and we can take a look at it. Come on, please. Make it three hours. you take money for doing this. There's no long skirts, I should get more money. What's she doing in the fashion parade? Um, a little something I did in my spare time. Any more shots like that and you'll have lots of spare time. Judith, I suppose you told her she'd be on the screen tomorrow. I didn't make it definite, Harry. anything much there. Hey, wait a minute. I shot much more than that. I threw some of that stuff out in trimming. Threw it out? That's sacrilege. Take a look in the cutting room. It's all in the outfit bin. I find it. Can you get the little guy's picture? Sure, let him have it. Only tell him in the future to confine himself to dark alleys or stay away from strange dames. I'll convey your kind message of sympathy to Mr. Beck. Why, everyone who works for August Newsreel is the best in the business. Why, take me, for instance. I, 
Let's go far down. The best newsreel cameraman in the world. And why shouldn't he be? After all, I taught him everything he knows. Well, I didn't exactly teach him everything. I, I taught him how to handle a camera. Well, I didn't teach him how to handle a camera. I mean, I carried a camera. I taught him how to put the film in the camera. Uh, no, no, do I put the film in the camera? He puts the film. Well, I taught Well, she was a little too tall for me anyway. Browsing or looking for something special? As a matter of fact, I am. Someone special. Named Phil Farr. Well, he's a hard guy to get to, but I think I can help you. I'm his best friend. Really? Well, I'm from Snap Magazine. My name is Peggy Lane. Peggy Lane? You're a lucky girl, Peggy. Why? Because I happen to be Phil Farr. Yes, I know. Your assistant pointed you out. You're one of the people I'm supposed to talk to. You see, we're doing an article on men who cover the news. And I'm gathering local color. Are you busy, or do you have time for a chat? Well, I'm really very busy, but you've talked me into it. I'm sure you know a great deal I'd be interested in hearing. I don't want to interrupt your work. Oh, don't worry about that. Now, what you'll be interested in hearing, and I, I think you I don't know very again. much about newsreels, Mrs. Barr, but I know you can help me. Phil, please. Well, did you find it? Harry, this is Peggy Lane. She's doing a story about important people uh -huh. like us. Peggy, Mr. Avery. He invented the newsreel. Well, how do you do, Mr. Avery? Hello, Lane. Would you excuse us just a minute? We're doing our good deed for the year. Am I in the way? Not at all. Stay right where you are, dear. You add a little class to the joint. one gauge and they cost three ninety five. If that's what you were wondering about. Yeah. Fifty one gauge, um, hmm? Wait a minute. Was he a skinny little runt with a big name that outweighed him? Well, that's the guy. Hey. That's very nice. Always glad to be complimented on my work. I meant the dame. I was afraid of that. Hold it. There's my little man. Okay. What about your business? You kept Miss Lane waiting long enough. Thanks a lot, Harry. Now I'm all yours. Mind joining me in a quick errand? I'd love it. Goodbye, Mr. Avery. Nice meeting you, Miss Lane. You can tell me all about yourself. Well, I was born at a very early age. Of your heart, you're doing this man back a favor, hmm? That's me all over. Soft-hearted Phil with a head to match. Do people usually object to having their pictures taken? Not very often. Mr. Spar, did you get it? Oh, yeah, sure. Here you are. Hmm. You're all in the clear now. Hmm. Pack of cigarettes, Mabel. Yeah, and that's me, all right. Now you're all set. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. But Mr. Spar. Yep. This is what they call positive film, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mrs. Spar, isn't there such a thing as negative, too? That's right. Positive and negative. Uh, Mr. Spar, I hate to bother you anymore. You've been so kind. But I feel so much safer if I can get the negative, too. If my wife Listen, ever... Listen, you told me all that before. Right now, I'm being interviewed by this very charming and very patient young lady. So if you come around tomorrow, uh, I'll be... Mrs. Spar, if you get me the negative right now, I'm willing to pay you a hundred dollars for it. A hundred dollars? Say, for a hundred dollars, I'd give you the camera, too. What is this wife of yours, one of these female wrestlers? Oh, please, now, Mr. Spar. I suppose I'll have to see this thing through. Will you come back up to the office with me? It'll only take a minute. I can interview you in the elevator as well as any place. Thanks. <laughs> Don't go away. Uh, you're a real friend, Mr. Spar. Phil! 
Say, we've been thrown downstairs trying to get you. Avery wants you in a projection room right away. Uh, what's the matter with him now? Is he breaking? Well, I'll have to see what he wants. You sit down and make yourself at home. You know, this is beginning to look like a conspiracy to keep us from being alone. I'm a very patient young lady, remember? I'll be back in two seconds. Start counting. Looking for me, Chief? Sure am. This is sensational if I haven't made a mistake. Roger, run over to the cutting room and get all the film Phil shot this morning. Be sure you bring me everything. Okay, boss. Bill, my boy, although you may not know it, I think you brought in the biggest scoop in years. Don't let me keel over with suspense. Tell me what's happened. You'll see. Just sit back and prepare yourself for a shot. Okay, Bill. Wow! Is the boss excited? I haven't seen him this excited since Steve Day. <laughs> Something big must have broken. Maybe his wife is going to divorce him. Yeah. And I wouldn't blame her. He's really excited. Must be something important. Oh, don't pay any attention to him. He always acts like that. Now, see what you mean. Say, is there a phone around here? I really should check with the office. There's a phone booth down the hall. Oh, thanks. And um, if Mr. Spar comes, will you tell him I'll be right back? Okay. Look at them. When that picture was taken, they never dreamed they could lose. Huh. They only knew what was coming. I don't get it. What are you running this junk for? Buy it. Maybe you'll learn something. Hitler may be dead, but all those guys aren't. Sure they are. Wait a minute. You'll see. What do you mean? Now, look at that guy. Take a look at this. That's my shot from this morning. See any resemblance? It's the same guy. Exactly. And that Nazi is Kurt Bauer, known as the Butcher. Bauer? He was reported killed in the bombing of Berlin. He's listed as dead. That's right, and your camera brought him back to life. <laughs> That's what I call a great scoop. Live? New York City? Hey, get the FBI on the phone. They'll want to know about this. Avery speaking. Mr. Avery, a Lieutenant Riley of the Detective Bureau is on the wire. Put him on. Hello? Yeah, this is Avery, Lieutenant. What? Hold on a minute. It's uh, Detective Riley. He says he just picked up your friend Beck. Beck? What for? What's happened? I, uh, I gave one of my men some film to give to Beck. No, no, don't apologize. I can understand that it looks suspicious to you. Are you holding Beck? Good. Keep him there. It wasn't stolen film, but something else has come up since then that must be investigated right away. Yeah, he's right here with me. What? Yeah, all right. Uh, hang on a second. They want you down to the police station to identify Beck. Uh, where are you now? I see. Yeah, well, he'll be there, and he'll have some other film that will interest you, fella. Well, Lieutenant Riley will pick you up in the lobby in five minutes. Yeah, way ahead of you. There's some connection between Beck and this top Nazi. You go with Riley at the police station, show that film to Inspector Lonergan, then see what they can find out about Beck. Put through a call to Jerry Decker in Washington. While I'm waiting, get me to the FBI office in New York. Oh, boy, is this sensational material for Peggy's article. Peggy! You got no time now for that magazine, Dame. Hey, watch that Dame talk. Peggy's a high-class type. She's the kind I could really go for. That greatest scoop of our lives, and you stand there and talk to me about dames? Get this film to headquarters. Hello! Hello! Morning. Mr. Avery wants to see you in the projection room right away. Operator, will you hurry on that Washington call? Sorry to keep you hanging around like this, but it's very important. What's going on around here? Everybody seems so excited. I'll explain it to you later. Right now, it's a trade secret, but you may be in on a much bigger story than you'd planned. Going down. Hey, hold it. Operator, I'm still waiting for that Washington call. Look, baby, I got a little job to do. Where can I call you later? 
Mr. Spar, if you haven't heard, a good reporter never returns without completing an assignment. <laughs> Can I meet you somewhere? I'll tell you what. You know the Bartell Apartments on East 54th Street? Mm -hmm. Guess who lives there? You. Yep. The place is unpretentious, but neat. Food and liquor are good, and the price is right. If you like, we can finish our interview there. Don't you worry about your reputation? Ah, it's in shreds already. Besides, I trust you. Well? All right. I'll wait for you there. Good. Mr. Spar? Yeah? I'm Lieutenant Riley, Detective Bureau. Swell, you're just the guy I wanted to see. Oh, will you excuse us for a minute? Okay. Here's the key. It's apartment 2D. Will you be long? Not long. See you in about an hour. All right. Bye. So long. Sorry to keep you waiting. That's all right. You have the film. Yeah, I got it right here. Let's get going then. I have a car outside. Oh, he's waiting for me outside the building, and I gave it to him. That's all I know about Beck. How's it sound to you, Lieutenant? I don't know. Sounds very confusing to me. Gonna be plenty of excitement when the Chief takes a look at this film I got. Yeah. Avery said something about it on the phone. What is it exactly? Lieutenant, this may look like film to you, but it's actually dynamite. Something special, huh? The guy whose kisser's in here is wanted in 88 countries. Wanted in 88 countries? Must be a big man. Big? One of the top war criminals. You interested me. Mind if I look? Not at all. Yeah, you're right. The chief will want to see this. Well, I feel a lot better now that that stuff's being convoyed by the police department. I wonder how this guy Beck fits into the picture. Give me time. Okay, we'll put it all in order for you. Hey, where are we going? What do you think? Past Canal Street to get to Sutter Street? That's doing it the hard way. We're doing it the hard way. Mind if I have that film for a minute? It's safe with me. Yeah, but I just wanted to take a look at it for a minute. Take a look at this. You guys aren't cops. Just what is your angle? Don't ask so many questions. So oh, I'm a little curious. But look, you got the film. That's what you wanted, isn't it? You looked at it, didn't you? Mind if I smoke? If you're careful with the ashes. What's the matter? Don't you see that no smoking sign? Come on out on the deck with that thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean sorry. to. Sorry? You'd be a lot sorry if you started a fire in here. Well, I'm very glad you noticed. You're a big help. Help? Well, you guys are no help to me. Smoke, 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 and always in the wrong places. There now, smoke your head off. Thanks a lot, pal.
the devil happened? I've been pounding on that door, it seemed like hours. Well, they locked me in, it was terrible. Wait a minute. Come over and sit down. Now, who locked you in? Two men. Oh, Bill, I thought they were going to kill me. Two men? Did they say they were the police? Yes. What happened to you? Oh, never mind that now. How long ago were they here? Only a few minutes ago, I guess. Bill, what do they want with you? No, exactly. Whatever it is, they're pretty desperate. Avery's still at the office. He's got the negative. What negative? That must have been what they wanted here, the negative. They got the positive print from me. Avery, this is Phil. Say that Lieutenant Riley was a phony. Tried to take me for a ride. Are you all right? Where are you now? At home, but minus the positive, they shoved a gun in my side and took it. Why the... Don't worry, Phil. I've got the negative right here. Get over here as soon as you can. I'll be there in 15 minutes. I got messed up a bit and I'll have to change my clothes. Okay. Great guy, my boss. Come to think of it, you're a great guy, too. You move into my life two hours ago, and boy, are you getting material for your article. Points? No complaints. Good. I'll only be a minute. Killed himself. Killed himself? Avery? No, he wouldn't do that. Wait. He'd seen that film. I'd seen it, and they wanted me. Must have wanted to nail him, too. Sure, that's it. They got to him right after I phoned him. Officer, I gotta make a call. Is it all right if I use that phone? Yeah, I guess it's okay. Twenty second precinct. Put me through to Inspector Lonigan. This is Spar of Argus Newsreel. Just a minute. Oh. Lonigan? Yeah. This is Bill Spar. Yes, Barr, what do you want? Yes, I heard about Avery. Supposed to have jumped out of a window a little while ago. Jumped? He didn't jump, he was pushed. Somebody got to him, the same couple of phony cops that tried to get me a while ago. Phony cops, you say? I wonder who's using that one. Look, what are you gonna do about Avery? I tell you, he was murdered. Maybe. But don't get so excited, Phil. Don't get so excited. Avery's lying out there dead and you... Listen, Lonigan, if you don't do something about this right away, I'm gonna call the commissioner. Better calm that boy of yours down before he blows his top. Hello, Phil. Phil, shut up a minute. Phil, this is Avery. Avery? Oh, no. Look, let me tell you what happened. After I spoke to you, I took the negative out of the desk thinking it would be safer in the film vault. I was just starting out when a tough-looking hoodlum stepped in and pulled a gun on me. He took the film out of my hand and then hooked himself to my wallet. I looked to see if there was any money in it. I got a chance to kick the light plug out of the socket. I figured he wouldn't use the gun. The shots might attract someone. In the dark, I managed to avoid him as much as I could, but he almost got me a couple of times. Finally, I got in a lucky punch and caught him off balance, and he staggered back and fell through the window. After that, I went out the back way in case that hoodlum had someone with him. I came straight here to Lonigan. He's letting it get out, and I'm dead just to confuse whoever sent that guy after me. Where's the negative now? Still in that hoodlum's pocket. Still in his pocket? Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, Inspector Lonigan wants him. Oh, Spar? Tell the sergeant in charge. I want to talk to him. Right. Hey, sergeant. Inspector Lonigan wants you on the phone. By the way, Lonigan, I owe you one for not telling me about Avery right away. That took ten years off my life.
Wait a minute. Honey, it wasn't Avery after all. It was just some guy that stole his wallet. Oh, Bill, I'm so glad. So am I. Inspector Lonigan wants you to bring this to him right away. Right. Guess you better go on home. I hate to lose you now, baby, but I gotta do it. I understand. Besides, I live on the way downtown. You can drop me off. Well, then I'll know you're safe. For your sake, too. It will be, just as soon as this negative in my pocket is turned over to the police department, then I'll bow out. Be careful, Phil, please. I'll phone you as soon as the job's done. I'm afraid, Phil. I keep remembering those two men. The body of that other man. I know I'm being a baby, but... No, you're not. I'll take you up to your door. Oh, just a minute, honey. Hey! Take this to Inspector Lonigan at the 20th Precinct. Don't you want me to wait for you? Wait three minutes, and if I don't come out, go right down to the station house. Oh. I get it. No, you don't get it. Just do as I told you. Okay, sure, sure. No offense. You know I'm going to have nightmares about all this. Mm -hmm. Don't dream about me. I'll try. Tomorrow, I'll make it all up to you. From now on, nothing gets in our way. Sounds wonderful. Good night, darling. Good night, Phil. I'll call you later. No, you'd better come with me. I don't want to leave you here alone. I'll bring you back when everything's really all right. No, Phil. Come on. Come for the ride, anyway. To keep me from it. All right. Almost two hours since we heard from Phil. Yeah, I know. I'm getting worried. Sure. Hope nothing happens to him. Or the negative. We're doing everything we can now, Harry. I know that. Just can't help thinking about it. Hello, Miller. Anything new? Not yet. We've got our men working. Oh, Harry, this is Mr. Miller of the FBI. Mr. Avery. Mr. Miller, I'm certainly glad you fellas are in on this. Well, we're glad to get a crack at Bob. Lonigan told us how you spotted him. It really was one of my men, Phil Sparrow, who started the whole thing. Right now, we're worried about him. He should have been here two hours ago. Anything been reported in the last few moments, Levy? Things have been pretty quiet, Inspector. Cab driver got mugged. We're picking up the details now. Better send out an alarm for Phil Sparr. He's a newsreel cameraman. Here's the description. OK, Inspector, I'll get it right out. Here's a patrolman's report. This guy was picked. The zero was found two blocks away. No wonder you found it two blocks away. With that clutch, I got you lucky to get two blocks. But ever since I got that jam, I've been having trouble with that clutch. I just spent 17 bucks to get it fixed, and it still don't work. I'm going to shoot that mechanic if Never guy... mind that. You say you got hit, but you didn't see anyone. How do you know you were slugged? Look, you don't think I was born with that lump on my skull. You think I walk around hitting myself on the head? Don't answer that. Do <laughs> you know why anyone would want to hit you? Look, I'm only a hacky. You're the detective. How do I know why they want to hit me? All I know is I picks up a fare, he starts for a house, he hands me a can, I'm listening to the music, and boing, the next thing I know, I'm picking myself up in the airway. I staggers up to the street, and there I see a beautiful sight. There's a cop coming right at me. I think it's the first time I'm ever glad to see a cop. I mean, because before, all I ever heard them say is, you go on and get that chair, but... Don't get me wrong, I... I like the police. 
Yeah, well, you said something about a can. What can? This can, right here. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on a guy that belted me while I... You know, you never believe it to look at me, but I used to be pretty handy with my mitts. Had a fast left jab, just like dynamite, see? And then when I crossed that right, the fella hit me right here once, almost broke my jaw. Sit down. Yes. Keep quiet. Yes, sure. My mother, my mother would never let me fight no more. Hey, this is a movie film. Yeah, sure. I go to the movies all the time. My, my girl likes that guy, uh, Bogart. She says he's supposed to be tough. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see what he'd do if somebody hit him and I hadn't stole his cab. Hey, you. Yeah, well, of course, he hasn't got a cab, I know. I'll take this up to the inspector right away. Yeah, hey, hey, do you think they put my picture in the paper? Be sure they spell my name right. Trandavalsky. Yeah, that's with a K and two O's. You're the first name of Stanislaus. I was named after my uncle. Uncle Willie. Well, Dame, like Rita, go for a run like that. Maybe it's the mother instinct in it. Yeah. What happened? Uh, the pilot's all fixed. He'll call and tell us when he'll pick up the phone line tomorrow. How much? I persuaded him a bit. I bet you did. Yeah. I guess I'll get some sleep. I can use it. Okay. Don't forget to check out the guy in the cellar. Right. Fix me a drink, honey. Having trouble with your crew? When this business is over, the first thing I'm going to do is get myself a new organization. Completely new? That depends on you. Have I ever let you down? Not yet. What do you mean by that? Nothing in particular. And that will fall down on the job you send me after, Phil Spark. Well, you got him. Yeah, but I still got to get that negative. If the police get Beaumont, I don't get that money. And I got to get it. I got a lot of plans. 
big plans. With that money, I can go someplace. Someplace where I'll be a big, important man. Once I get started, no one can stop me. The name Joseph Gibbons will mean something. What show is that from, Joe? What do you mean? You never can forget you were once an actor, can you? That's what I like about you, Katie. You say things nobody says. Nobody else would dare. Forget it. I was only kidding. That's mine, all right. Take a look at that face, Mr. Miller. Good thing we picked up that cab driver. Yes, that's him, all right. Coming out of a New York bank in broad daylight. What bank was that? The Fifth National at Madison Square. If they recognize him down at the bank, maybe we can figure out what he's up to. I'll have some enlargements made, and I'll have a man there when they open in the morning. And maybe when we find that guy, we can find out what happened to Phil. I hope. As I foretold you, we're all spirits. Are melted into air. But soft, the fair Ophelia, get thee to a nunnery. Alas, poor Europe. I knew him, Horatio. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. That's the kind of stuff I used to do before I gave up the stage. Remember? You didn't give up the stage, Joe. You were fired for drinking. Remember? I told you before, I don't like that kind of talk. You don't want me to get mad, do you? It didn't mean anything. Where's your sense of humor? I never had one. Honey, what are you going to do with Phil's bar? Why? Right. What do you care? Just wondered. The sucker was worried about you, too. Really? I'm touching. I wonder what he'd say if he knew who you really were. Who cares? Let's talk about something else. I think I'll tell him. I'd like to see the look on his face just before I turn Harold loose. You're not going to let Why him. Why not? What do you got to worry about? Why well, worry about the rap we take if we get caught? Even a separator murder is a long term. It'll be much longer if Spar gets away and talks. That's why he's got to go. Just as soon as Beaumont pays off. What are you going to do with the money, darling? First of all, we get out of town. Atlanta, Mexico, maybe even South America. Yeah. I look good in those white suits. Soft. Silk, linen, big Panama hat. You're the Latin doll of treat. I'm going to buy you everything you want, baby. Everything. That rate, the 15000 that you're going to get from Beaumont won't last very long, will it? Fifteen grand. I mean, much more than that, baby. Much, much You gotta get out of here.
they do to you? Never mind about me. They didn't hurt you, did they? The phony cop was down here and... Bill, listen to me. Joe's going to kill you if I can't think of some way to get you out of here. Joe? Joe Gibbons, the guy who slugged you. He's the man Beaumont hired to get the film. He's getting a... Look, Bill, I want to get you out of this. I didn't and know when I started it was going to go so far. You were just bait. Well, to me, you were just another That was a jump, a very willing jump. I, I don't know get away right. from me, you tramp! Okay. I had that coming. Now I want to help you. You've helped enough. You and Gibbons are a great pair. So I am his girl. Then you know what a chance I'm taking in coming down here. Phony cop and a phony dame. Sure a phony dame who doesn't want to see a right guy get killed. Oh, I don't know why I bother. 24 hours ago, I didn't even know you. You mean nothing to me. And what did you come down here for? I don't know. Isn't it enough that I'm willing to double-cross Gibbons to help you? I'm not sure. What do you mean? Why should you suddenly want to help me? Why the switch? Don't tell me you have a conscience. I heard him say that you had to be killed. I, I knew I'd try to stop it. Then I asked myself, why? And? I had no answer. Look, you try to get the keys to these cups. It is Joe coming. Shh. Get over there. I want to make sure you're still with us. Do you want to level about this? I'll do anything. Then get to a phone somehow and call police headquarters. You believe I'll try? Good luck, kid. Visiting our young friend? No, no, wait a minute. You know, if I were the jealous type, I'd break your arm. I'm not. But there's one kind of double cross I do resent. The kind that digs into my pocketbook. And in this case, it's a matter of plenty of dough. Just what I'm going to do with you eventually, I don't know. Right now. Yes, I do. It's a Mr. Beaumont. He was in here with Mr. Fredericks, one of our depositors. They left less than five minutes ago. Five minutes? Can I use your phone? Yes, of course. Thanks. Get me police headquarters. More coffee, Jeff? I hope it's hot this time. Me too. I 
Dusty Bowman now. Go upstairs. I ain't had my breakfast yet. Get upstairs. The back way. Stick around. Good morning. Everything go all right? Perfectly. I have the money and I am now ready to leave. If you will tell me where I can meet the seaplane. Don't worry about the plane, Mr. Beaumont. As soon as we settle our little uh, financial deal, you'll be on your way. You were successful in liquidating the two men, Avery and Spar? It's all taken care of. Avery is dead. Spar is handcuffed in the basement. Uh, we were speaking of the money. Five. $15,000 and $5,000 more for a good job well done. There you are, Mr. Gibbons. And now the plane. Keep counting. What did you say? Keep counting. You still have $780,000. Mr. Gibbons, we've both agreed to certain terms. I have more than kept my part of the bargain. I expect you to keep yours. You'll either take my deal, or go find a plane of your own. Mr. Gibbons, you are exactly what I thought you were. A cheap American gangster. Uh-huh. Keep counting. You will pay for this, Mr. Gibbons. You're doing the paying. Keep counting. Twenty-five. Thirty. Now who pays, Mr. Gibbons? Yeah. You got a long way to go yet. Don't touch that. Yes? Mr. Gibbons is still asleep. This is Beaumont speaking. What do you want? Well, this is the pilot you're supposed to meet, Mr. Beaumont. I've got it all arranged, and I'm ready to leave now. Good. Where do we meet? The East River, right at the foot of 93rd Street. If I land and take off right away, nobody will get suspicious. Oh, wait a minute. 93rd Street and the East River. Good. Yeah. It's an easy spot to reach, and it's pretty quiet. What time can you be there? Well, it's 10.42 now. I'll time it to land at exactly 11.30. But you've got to be there on time. I don't want to attract any attention. Nor do I. I will be there precisely 11.30. Exactly where in the basement is Mr. Spar? In the coal bin. At the end of the corridor. The keys to Mr. Spar's handcuffs, please. Go downstairs, get Spar and bring him up here. What about him? <laughs> he will give me no trouble. It looks as though you have made a mistake, Mr. Gibbons. A very, very stupid mistake. photographer. How does it feel to be on the other end? Shut up. I think 
I only shot you with my camera. Take him down to the car. Well, Mr. Gibbons, I will say goodbye. And here's your fee. Street and First Avenue. How far do you think you'll get? By this time, they got your picture plastered all over the city. Mr. Spa, if we have trouble, you will make a very effective shield. Twenty. We have ten minutes to spare. Good. We will wait here for five minutes, then walk. We will be less conspicuous. Don't you think these will be conspicuous? Give me the keys to the handcuffs, Fredericks. You will give us no trouble, will you, Mr. Spahn? No. No trouble at all.
will be all right. You're not hurt. No, I'm all right, I guess. Hey, it's the biggest scoop in years. We're not covering it. Are you kidding? Look. <laughs> Argus is always on the job. Hey, you, get out of there. Well, Squire, I'm glad to see you're still in one piece. At times, I wouldn't have bet on it. We got a phone call from him. Well, I thought you'd like to thank her yourself. I just heard what you did. And you really meant it when you said you'd help. That's all right. I wish there was something I could do. Could you use a cigarette?